Hi, everyone. Welcome to Spilling the Tea on GovCon. I'm Teresa Moon, Director of Business Development for Parabolus. We provide working capital options for government contractors by government contractors. And I am super excited to be back today. It feels like it's been a while since I've been behind the camera like this or in front of the camera, I should say. I'm not behind it. We've got people that do that better than me. But the purpose of our program of Spilling the Tea is to give our growing network of GovCons access to industry resources and experts to help them grow and thrive in this marketplace. So with that in mind, I'm super excited. Our guest today is one of the best resources that I can offer to businesses that I work with. Judy Bratt, she is a dynamic human being outside of being a consummate professional in the industry. So I'm super excited for everything we're going to talk about today because if nothing else, you're going to make me look fantastic because I know you. <laughs> so I'm going to ride those coattails as hard as I can. But Welcome. I wanted to give you, a, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to give you an opportunity to chat with our listenership. Tell us about yourself a little bit more and about your fantastic business, Summit Insight. Thanks, Teresa. And I'm also really excited to be here. I want to take you on a journey into the heart of darkness of federal sales. And I say this because I've been in that dark place. And I promise you, I'll bring you out safely, but I'm not sure you're ever going to be the same again. Um, I come to my work in over 34 years as a subject matter expert in federal contracting. By After graduate school, I was working in the computer industry in IBM, and it took me six months to discover that, not be, that I was on a trajectory not to be a strategist, which is what IBM Canada said I was going to be. It took me six months to discover that I was in a sales job. And I was so horrified, I literally left the country. <laughs> I, mean, just, um, I, I wanted to be a consultant. I wanted to advise people and help them. I didn't want to sell. And the path that that took me on uh, included taking me to Washington, D.C. in 1988. And in 15 years as a subject matter expert, helping over 5,000 Canadian companies do business with the federal government in the United States under the trade agreements, a lot of it through partnerships. I founded my company in 2003. I was, I have over the total of 25 years that followed my coming to the United States. I had advised thousands of companies and written a book. I could tell you just about anything you wanted to know about federal contracting, except one little thing, how someone actually closed the business. It wasn't like I didn't want to tell you. I honestly didn't know, which didn't matter till the day it really, really did when I had a big contract and was supporting seven companies for a whole year. And I got to the end of the part where I was going to be giving them their sales plan. And I was going to be coaching them for 10 months on how to make calls. And they said, great. When are you making the introductions? I said, the what? They said, the introduction. They went, no, 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 no. They went, yes, 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 yes. They went, no, 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 no. They said, uh-huh. And I went through shock and anger and denial and all of those stages of grief until I had to actually use my own tools and pick up the phone and it was awful. It was awkward. I didn't know what to say, but I followed the tools that I had. I got past the fear because I had no choice right. at this point. This was my business for the whole year. I was on the hook for thousands of calls and hundreds of introductions. And at the end of that project, I figured it out. I had some marvelous turning points along the way. But at the end of that, I thought, okay, I am never do. Wait a second. I cannot be the only person who's got subject matter expertise that I want to share with the world, but struggles with the human connection part of sales. Yep. Nobody should spend a year the way I just did. How could I make that easier? And that completely shifted the trajectory of everything that I do in my professional practice. Because I realized there was this dark, empty space in the federal market, this gap. People talk about in uh, financing and investment between the, uh, they talk about the valley of death between innovators and they get to the point where they've got a great idea and then they need the financing to get to the market. There's a similar gap in subject matter expertise and needing to build the relationships with your federal humans. So somebody Absolutely. will say, yes, I trust you. Mm -mm. And to be able to stay the course. 
And so my last six years have been the most exciting in running my business because I'm at the place where data meets human connection to bring together people who have innovation and passion from the contractor side with people who need innovation and also have passion and mission in the federal arena and to do it in an efficient, structured way that lets you build on not only the expertise and the things that you love, but also the people who love you and make it a lot easier than it is for a whole lot of really talented people that the world needs yep. so you can do business together. You know, it's amazing. And, and I love what you're saying here about that human connection aspect to it. I think, you know, I've been told since I got into the industry, which is far less experience than you have. And I was always seeing things from the perspective of my own personality. I, I never had an issue with the cold calling side of things because my, I can talk to a lamppost. I come by it. Honestly, <laughs> if you, if you ever meet my dad, you'll know exactly why I can do that too. My dad literally going on a walk with him in the morning with the dogs was no exercise at all other than the movement of the mouth because you talk to everyone that walked past us. So I had that knack for it, but that isn't something that a lot of people come by is easily. And even mm -hmm. though that they're great at what they do, which is what we espouse all the time with our clients, just because you're great at what you do, that doesn't translate into success in the marketplace. You have, there's a yeah. lot of, of things that come into it. And I'll use your terms. There's players and layers and everything, right? And mm -hmm. you've got to understand those so that you know how to gauge your success and how to regroup when things need to be readjusted. And that's why I love what you put out for our industry and for people who are growing because it, it makes sense. It's easy to follow. And God love the, the rhyming because it helps for remembering things too. Because like we spoke about earlier, sometimes when you're excited and anxious about things, it goes like, whoop, out, out there your mind. And then you can't remember what you need to do on the spot. So having a way of addressing that in your business practices so that it's in your memory easily and accessibly, that, that is exactly what is the most important, I think, when people are learning it. Because the majority of Op of owners that I've met with are, are operators of their companies. They're subject matter mm -hmm. experts. Yep. They don't know how to do every nuance of their company. So I had they this, need people like you. And I had this great experience with one of my clients yesterday. Um, we had, I think, a seven or eight person team. And this is the, uh, the structure of how I work with companies. And so we were going through the, the federal sales game, how to play to win. And at the end of this three hour deep dive, really animated session, lots of Q&A, lots of storytelling and, and, and story sharing. Uh, the CEO said, I want you all to know something. I had sniffed around the federal market for years and you just learned in three hours what it took me three years to understand. It said, Judy and her team just made this so easy for you to really grasp who are these people at these different roles, the players at all the layers. And what's important to each of them? And it was interesting because yesterday afternoon, I was working with a client that were in week six of the program and they'd been kind of struggling a little bit. And so I just threw out the window the first half of what I had planned to present. And I said, all right, guys, I want you to, each of you to start out talking about one thing that is going to be different. One thing that is going to be better for the federal buyer who chooses you. How is their mission going to be better? How's their career going to be better? How's their life going to be better? Because they met you and engaged you to serve them. And it was really interesting because some folks really kind of start to, well, we're, we're number one in the industry and I'm going, yeah, well, how does, how's that helpful for them? And it really, I could kind of feel the shift of, oh, what's in it for them? Yeah. How's their life better? Uh, my friend, William Randolph, who's a former naval person and also yes. a former senior acquisition professional in DHS and is now out on his own in his own company, Think Acquisition. Yes. He says, so much of it turns on how you use five words, the order you use them. And instead of going, how can I help you? If you ask that question, you're giving your buyer work. You right. want to approach and say, how I can help you. But dum ba dum ba dum Have some yep. ideas. But to be able to... Uh, think about, there's no such thing as selling to the government. There's only selling to people. Right. And that really means getting past all the stories we make up in our head when the unexpected happens. Life is 
filled with conversations that are fall down, go boom. Lots of things. There's a, it's very rare when we meet someone in our lives and just oh, everything clicks. You and I were like that, but it's really rare yeah. that somebody gets your cadence. You've got the same energy. You get it. We have lots of first conversations that are awkward as human beings. Yeah. It's going to be the same with a human being we meet in the federal arena. And we have competitive intelligence. You read about emotional intelligence. And I had run across through one of my friends who is still in the federal arena in a different role, Emily Harmon, positive intelligence. And that's game changing when we start to bring that into a really data heavy um, approach yep. that is much more common in federal contracting. And I love it. And that's a, a perfect segue into what I really wanted you to talk about, because I think that um, we, you know, we need to keep this at the forefront, the, the human interaction is key and, and utilizing positive intelligence can really help promote growth in the federal space. And so if you wouldn't mind, walk us through a little bit of, of how you incorporate that into your programs. Sure. And so the, the essence of positive intelligence is that at its heart, we are, you know, there are a lot of places where a business owner can go and sell and engage people and make money and make a difference in the world. Doing in the federal arena is hard. And so those the, the upside is that there's good profit and meaningful work to be done for those who want to go the distance. A lot of the time, we have a lot of obstacles, not just regulatory paths to thread, but also we have those thousands of conversations, those hundreds of calls and contacts we need to make in order to be successful. Our brains are wired to give us a little dopamine hit whenever we do something that experience shows us we're, we're going to be successful. But that also means that our brains are wired to get answers. And even when we don't have a real answer, our brains make stuff up. Yeah. We can get discouraged. And in so even in place of absence of information, let's say the, the most obvious one is what do you do when somebody doesn't return your call? Well, why didn't they return your call? And I always quiz groups of folks and, and they say, oh, well, they don't like us or they're too busy. Um, we didn't give them enough information. I say, all right, this is your first answer. The one thing that's true 100% of the time when they don't return your call, the one thing you can know for sure is they didn't return your call. Now, and that can get really discouraging. At the end of it, I loved the positive intelligence work based on the studies and research by Shirzad Shamin, New York number one best time, New York Times number one bestseller. And in his work, you really he breaks out, draws on different disciplines of psychology. And we have our left brain survival energy, which is all kind of based on avoiding pain and those things, the bad news, you've heard that you've got an inner critic, right? That's an old meme. Bad news is you don't have one inner critic. You got one ring, ringleader and nine accomplices, like just shoot me. <laughs> but, but the cool thing is all of these fear-based things, they are based on our gut level survival lizard brain. We're in the intellectual part of our head. And we're in the, as a culture, we tend to just overlook inconvenient, messy, emotional feeling, like not just the emotional feeling part, but those feelings are literally manifest in us physically. We don't even stop to notice how are we physically feeling. Our bodies tell us a lot of stuff. And based on those feelings and just noticing, do, have you hit a negative emotion? We hit a lot of those throughout the day. Right. And to be able to notice, okay, What's the flag? Okay, I feel yucky. Let me figure out what's going on. Can I disengage that? And how can I find a sage response? How can I find a response that's driven not by fear, fear of pain, fear of loss, fear of embarrassment, feel what happens if I don't make my numbers? What happens if I don't make the sale? Got to do it. Got to do it. Got to protect my family. Got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. 
That's the avalanche. And, and sure. And in, and, and we, those are very powerful drivers. Mm -hmm. um, they also just erode our spirit over time. You've heard the phrase, the beatings will continue until morale improves. If we wanted somebody we cared about in our life to be successful, when they fall down, you pick them up, you cheer right. for them, you help them up. And but the inner self-talk that a lot of us have, that we, and we're uh, very driven, accomplished professionals, a lot of us have that inner whip going all the time. And being driven by sage responses and power instead can sustain us and also cascades out to people around us. So the, the sage powers, the sage powers of empathy. Empathy is a really big connector. And to be able to give somebody you're talking to the sense that you're in the same place with them. Mm -hmm. You get it. So, wow, this is hard. Even that as a basic connector to take the time to care about what's going on in the life of the person you're talking to. When you're talking to somebody new in the federal arena, to stop for a minute. We've been through a hard two or three years to say, hey, yep. how's your family? That's not a trivial question anymore. To say, stop, say, hey, how are you really? And you might not get to the other 17 questions, but right. the fact that you stopped and cared about that for a minute, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So I'm going to share the five powers of sage. So one of those is, is empathy, the, the love of the love of connection. Mm -hmm. The second is explore the love of curiosity of what's actually just factually what's happening here. Let's understand. The third sage power in a, you, again, the flag goes off. I don't feel great. All right. Just a second. Something's distressing me. All right. Innovate is the third one. What could we do differently mm -hmm. in this situation? And the, the fourth is to navigate. Gee, you know what? Of all the things that get us all spun up at the end of our many, many years from now, if I were to look back, what would I wish I had done? What, what, are, what, are, my, what are my values that say, what is the right thing to do in this situation? And so it's love of uh, uh, a love of purpose. And the fifth is activate love of making things happen. Now, these are all really powerful motivators mm -hmm. and to approach any obstacle or um, difficult situation or just something that says, wow, something's not working and find a sage response. It spins down all the tension and leaves us feeling much more in connection with people that otherwise we might be finding it hard to build a relationship with. Yeah. I love that. And I think, you know, it's, it's all too often. I think some salespeople get it, but I think it's more in that um, if you've had close human connection in your life, it, you're more apt to pick up on this, but there are a lot of people that have worked really hard and because of that haven't been able to make those connections. So this is probably where the disconnect lies a lot. And I think a lot of people who have been very successful in a lot of areas of their lives may not always have that personal connection uh, success as well. And so uh, we all know what a negative attitude can do for yeah, anything People pick life. it up. There's this cool concept mm -hmm. called mirror neurons, which is why on the one hand we go, oh, I have to make my sales calls. Yeah. And it's 4.30 in the afternoon, which can be a very good time of day to call, by the way. But you felt like your day is beating you up. And now you've got the list of eight people you're supposed to call. Hi, it's Sally. Really? Remember that a lar large portion of the time you're going to get voicemail. Yep. Can you? And I, I, I love asking people this question. Who loves a voicemail? Almost nobody does. Yeah, I bet you do. I love it because I usually give, I, I always have a one-liner that I can uh -huh. leave on there that makes them laugh about me. So if I can be a little self-deprecating on it, that's usually where Sometimes I go. I, some, and a lot of us are a little bit uh, uncomfortable about trying to be funny because we don't think we're funny people. Apparently right. people actually think I'm funny for the longest time. I didn't think I was at all. Um, but, and we get uncomfortable. But think of it this way. What if all you people who hate voicemail, what if I could give you 30 seconds 
of complete uninterrupted attention right inside someone's brain. Did you ever think of voicemail like that? Yeah. So, hi, it's Judy. Sorry I missed you. I'm calling from Summit Insight. I wanted to say thank you for being on my webinar last week. Check your email. I've got something for you. If I don't hear from you by noon on Thursday, I'll give you a call back sometime in midday Monday. Love it. And then I have that email queued up. I send the email and I call back when I said I would. Mm -hmm. But I want to give somebody a warm sense of hearing my voice. If you put the smile on your face, they hear it in your voice. Yes. And to have someone think, wow, if that's her voicemail, I wonder what she's, never mind. I don't care. Maybe she's not going to call me back. And you call back again. So by the time you hit call number three, again, when you're approaching it with not knowing, not making up stuff about this person, right. I'm driven by love and by purpose. I'm going, this is this person I'm calling. I've done my research. I know I can make the difference for this person. I yep. wonder what could be going on for them in their life and their profession. And so to approach every contact, get past the, we all have fear of rejection for one thing. Yep. And even people who are really, really good at sales, we're still Absolutely. always kind of going, no, wait. Ego wait, takes over. Got this. Yeah. Yeah. And so to be able to approach the situations where we're in the process of building relationships, things happen we don't understand and we persist. And even when a conversation seems to be staggering along or there doesn't seem to be a fit to think, what else could I do for this person? Or how else could I approach this organization? To be curious about what's happening, say, what could we try that's different? Look back and say, what do I wish I had done? All of these can get us into positive, creative headspace because we're driven by that sense of purpose, that thing that makes us love our subject matter expertise. There is a lot of places that we could make a difference in the world. We've chosen to be in the federal arena. We know that when a federal buyer has the benefit of our services, our products, our expertise, the federal government achieves its mission better. The person we're helping is going to be more professionally successful. Yeah. That means they get the opportunity to be promoted, to be more effective, to help more people, to have more financial stability and resources for their family, to take care of their community. All of those things can happen, but in order for that to happen, we need to make the offer. We need to get over ourselves and persist and engage so someone begins to trust us enough to say, okay, help us with this little thing and watch it grow. That's great. I love it so much. And I love your approach. I think that you make things very palatable in a, in a very uh, up, fast paced and, and high anxiety environment. I think that you're just your demeanor alone alleviates a lot of that pressure. So uh, with that in mind, I've got a lot of people that are going to be watching us today and feeling that same thing. And they, they're going to want to know if their business is a good fit and what that looks like and, and how they can engage with your programs or any presentations you have coming forward. Thanks for asking, Teresa. Growfedbiz.com, you can find out more. My flagship program is the Federal Business Intensive. It's an eight-week private program for companies that either uh, that are experienced, they've got typically been in business for more than five years. Whether or not you've ever done federal business before, you've got experience as a company. You've got experience in past performance, which is critical. Typically, uh, the companies that I work with have more than $5 million in revenue and at least five people in the company that are involved in uh, federal sales and business development. So triple five is a really good starting point. I do work with smaller companies, and I've got a couple of multi-million dollar companies as well and, uh, that are in the mid-tier or larger. And that's you can find out more and tap my free webinars on my website as well. We've got some downloads and you can check out our players and layers methodology under the resources tab. And if you're in the in the DMV in the Washington DC area, we also do a real literally hands on and feet on in person trust building exercise. Uh, so indoor rock climbing social it. and GovCon rock stars for your federal humans on both sides of the public private sector line. So for GovCons, friends, families bring your clients. We had people last night out from Navy, from State Department, 
uh, Defense Health Agency, contracting side, a lot of people who had never climbed before. And we had a blast. So I bet. you could check out more of that as well on my, on my website. And I wish we could have gotten into that more as well, because what people don't know about you is that you're a professional rock climbing coach. And so people not only can go and join you to have a good time, but you can actually give them pointers too. So <laughs> I think that that's amazing. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to be up there for one of these events because I it's keep the, missing it. It I, is I, the fourth Thursday of the month, except for November and December. And so check uh, check on the website, you register, and we'd love to have you come and try something new. Um, I, I just got tired of all the usual networking, and I thought, yeah. I want to do something I love and introduce it to other people. And the, it, the response is just ecstatic people are just glowing when they get uh, get to the end of the evening and we have lots of people who keep coming back you build a lot of trust and camaraderie when you're climbing up a wall and having to be supported by someone else right <laughs> there is nothing there's nothing quite like demonstrating trust when you show up in public in your underwear and put your <laughs> life in the hands of somebody you've never met before that is amazing and i <laughs> i will definitely be there i'll be uh i'll be making sure i'm wearing my most supportive <laughs> <laughs> and it will get full support. One of my one, one of my former clients had, um, had said, "Oh well, I haven't done this in ten years. You're gonna, you're you're all gonna laugh at me." I went, "The only laughter we have is joy." That's awesome, and I love that about you. I think you bring that to everything that you do, and I'm proud to know you, and and so happy to have had you on today. And like I said, I'm I'm gonna be riding those coattails after this. So just. Um, I, I'm not very big, so I promise it won't be too much pressure on it's your okay. back. It's okay. We have sandbags for anchors. No problem. I can, <laughs> I can, I, I, we, have, we have lots of ways to stay in balance and to support each other. And there's no place else in the federal market that's bringing together positive intelligence and the latest research on human connection to help fill in that missing gap that makes all the difference when you have a dedicated, talented team, you're pumping out proposals, writing novels for strangers, not getting the contract awards and task orders that you want when you've worked so hard to get your certifications and vehicles. If what got you here won't get you there, then looking at how can we make it easier to get in front of the federal buyers who need us before our competition. Yep. This That's is key. where we revolutionize the experience of GovCons who want to be successful. I love it. Well, Judy, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we're going to make sure that our listenership and our viewership have all of your information uh, so that they can be able to engage with you and get involved in your programs. I encourage everyone that's joining us to look into, Judy wrote a book too. That's on our website as well. And I have read it and I thank wish that you. I had it here to grab it too far Gover over and I'd have to go. I have to grab mine too. Government, I, can I grab it? Absolutely. I have wine to sec. Yeah. I, I definitely encourage everyone Let's to see check it out. This. Put it at your uh, desk. Yeah, put it on my desk, uh, desktop. There we go. Just sec. Whoa. Uh, Government contracts go. made easier because easy is fiction. That's right. <laughs> and so you can grab it. It on, uh, grab it on Amazon. Thousands of companies have found it really helpful in the federal arena. And uh, Teresa, I hope that people also tap parabolas to get the kind of resources that you need in order to do the job because there's a lot of things to do research shows companies spend anywhere from 30,000 to 233,000 dollars over the course of a year pursuing federal business make sure you've got what you need and make sure you talk to Teresa Thank about how you, you can so make much, it Judy. happen Hey, I appreciate that very much. And the purpose of this program, like I said, was to give access to resources and industry experts like yourself to our network and yours as well, who might not know the depth of what you're able to help them with. So we're grateful for your time today, and we hope that you'll come back and, and visit us again soon. I'd love that if you're listening, connect with me on LinkedIn, and let's figure out whether we're uh, uh, fit to work together. If uh, there's something I can do to help you, I will. Thank you so much, Judy. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Yourself. See you soon. Bye.